Greetings everyone and welcome back to another Starship Review. Today we're going to take a look at the legendary Connie, also known as the Kelvin Constitution Legendary Intel Battlecruiser. This is part 5 in my ongoing series, reviewing all the ships in the 10th anniversary bundle. As these videos have been getting longer and longer, I'd like to keep this one a bit short and to the point. No TED Talks, no tangents. Right, so let's get into it. The legendary Connie has the shortage lineage to date with only one counterpart, the Kelvin Command Heavy Cruiser. Other ships have had only one tier 6 counterpart, but this one only has one counterpart period, which means that it only comes with one console and one legacy trait. The legendary Connie is a very capable ship. Being a battlecruiser with a 5-3 weapon layout, it lends itself to cannons, though it would accommodate beams just fine. The console layout is as good as you could expect for a battlecruiser, with 4 tactical, 5 engineering, and 2 science. The bridge officer layout is very good, mostly due to its flexibility. Lieutenant Commander Tactical and a Lieutenant Commander Universal, along with an Ensign Universal, means that you can accommodate any cooldown management method and all the staple abilities you want at the rank that you want, at least, you know, given the confines of a battlecruiser. The Legendary Connie is a full Intel ship, which means that the Commander Engineering seat is also an Intel seat, along with the Lieutenant Commander Universal. The gimmick for full Intel ships, Active Sensor Arrays, is the worst one available mostly due to the fact that it takes way, way, way too long to trigger. Much like sensor analysis, you have to use it on a particular target, but unlike sensor analysis that gives you a scaling buff immediately that grows over time, ensuring that it will always be at least a little bit useful, and powering up to a really big buff against bigger targets, the active sensor array is all or nothing. You either wait long enough for it to charge up, or you just get nothing at all. And I can say that for me personally, I wasn't able to use it even once while recording footage for this video and a lot of that was on elite difficulty. And even if I were able to use it, the thing that you're targeting would be on life support by the time it came up, so it wouldn't amount to much anyway. I really think they need to find some way to change this ability so that there's some way to make it activate faster. Perhaps using Intel abilities could speed up the process or something, I don't know. Aside from that, the legendary Connie has Intel seating for both of its specialization seats, which I have to frown on because it makes it feel more like a sea store ship which it technically is, than a premium ship. Had it been given either Miracle Worker or Command for its second seat, then it would have been a competitive for high-end builds for either energy weapons or torpedoes respectively, but as it stands, it's going to be a powerful ship, but not top shelf. Intel seating has had a rough time since Miracle Worker came out. Override subsystem safeties is a great ability, but it just can't compete with other offerings. The new Borg duty officers that give crit chance and crit severity only work on ships with Intel seating, so it has that going for it. But those cost about the price of a Lobby ship each on the exchange, so not exactly affordable. The Torpedo Revolution took way too long to catch up to me, and God damn it, I've gone on a tangent again. And yes, that last sentence was scripted. I script all these videos. I'm a YouTuber pretending to be a professional after all. The point is that if you had asked me a year ago whether this ship would be a better performer than the Heavy Command Cruiser version, I'd have said it was a no-brainer in favor of the Legendary version. But I don't actually know. Given a proper torpedo build, the Heavy Command Cruiser version might actually have a higher DPS ceiling. Of course, that kind of thing doesn't matter to a lot of people, but I'd be remiss not to mention it. This is only the second version of the Kelvin Connie, and that'll make an ideal ship for a lot of fans of that version of the franchise regardless. Okay, let's talk traits and consoles. First, the legacy trait, down but not out. This trait increases your max subsystem power potential based on your current hull, up to 20 additional max power. Now, let me tell you the problem with this trait. Did you notice the word potential there? It doesn't actually give you any subsystem power, it just dynamically increases your maximum possible subsystem power. You still have to find a way to fill it. Frankly, even if it did give you the power, it wouldn't be that great. I find this trait to be bafflingly bad. If it didn't have the whole requirement or gave you the power, then it might be worth talking about, but as is, I'd avoid it. The new trait, Heard I Needed Help, follows a similar theme of needing your hole to drop below a certain amount, in this case 50%, but it also requires a second condition as well. Not only does it require your hole to be below 50%, but you have to use a whole heal or intel ability. If you perform this ritual, you'll be rewarded with a Kelvin pet that looks like your ship for 60 seconds that uses all the boff abilities from the Kelvin lockbox, which are pretty cool. 
Augment Boarding Party can give a one-time use Admiralty cards. Delayed Overload Cascade is a top-tier science ability, and Construction Shuttle Wing, which creates pets that heal ally vessels, is pretty cool. After having used Black Alert, I'd rate that trait way higher than this one in terms of fun factor because it triggers often and has a cool animation. This one is boring and nearly impossible to trigger, at least for me. First world DPS chaser problems I'm sure, but I had to remove my shield even on elite difficulty and I still had trouble getting below 50% in order to trigger it. It took me 30 minutes of fussing about to even get the footage for it. The results are definitely not worth it. The Kelvin boff abilities are really cool, but you can just grab them off the exchange and use them yourself. And if you're looking for a similar ability, well, you necessarily own Black Alert because it comes in the same bundle, so just use that trait instead. Okay, that's two disappointing traits. Maybe the console is better. The good thing is that it follows the theme of the trait, or vice versa, because the console came out first on the Heavy Command Cruiser. It gives plus three maximum aux power and the power to fill it, but that's not much power. However, the real prize is the other passive, 17.8% Cat 2 exotic damage, making it one of the better science consoles in the game. Not something you probably want to use on the legendary Connie itself, but a damn fine addition to either your Discovery or your Intrepid or any other science vessel that you might own. And since it's an account unlock, you get it on all of your science characters. This console would be a thumbs up even if it didn't have a clicky, and that's good because the clicky is terrible. Auxiliary Warp Core Ejection launches four little detonating explosives that travel a couple of meters behind you and explode doing heavy kinetic damage and applying a speed and turn rate debuff. Key word here being behind. This might be okay for PvP or against the Herc or something like that, but in most PvE environments, you're trying to keep the enemy in front of you, especially on science ships where you'd likely to use this console because most science abilities only work in a forward arc. However, that doesn't stop this from being a good console because the bonus exotic damage alone makes it very valuable. And that's about it. There are no hangar pets or experimental weapons or anything else to talk about. Just wait until we get to the Odyssey and it's six consoles and four traits. That's going to be a long video. This is a good ship, but it's not great. It has a lot of good things going for it, like the bridge officer layout and the top tier science console. It just doesn't feel that special. It feels like a sea store ship in the worst possible way. It doesn't have the tools for top DPS builds, though it will perform respectably no matter what you do with it. I heard someone say it felt like the kid brother to the Vengeance, and I'd have to agree. That ship just has more character, plus a hangar bay full of unique and powerful pets. This feels like the off-brand version of the Vengeance. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 because it is a really good ship, but there just isn't anything special about it. It's good, just not great. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more of my stuff and be notified when the next review comes out, consider subscribing. Take care of yourselves, and have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.